our world and beyond space in partnership with the European Space Agency. Sea levels are rising steadily around the world and with them the threat from Mother Nature. As ocean levels increase, the effects of tsunami waves, high tides and tropical storms are amplified. The ocean is the long-term memory of the climate, of the weather system. So if we want to understand the variations of weather over uh, months and seasons, we need to couple the atmosphere with the ocean. It may appear calm, but the sea level is slowly rising by an average of three millimeters per year. For the past 3,000 years, sea levels have remained relatively stable. But then we saw at the end of the 19th century, sea levels began to rise. And then we thought this recent rise was linked to global warming. Annie Kazanav is one of the 2,500 scientists who contributed to the landmark IPCC Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report released in 2007. Their findings on global sea level rises relied heavily on satellite data. As you know, the oceans represent 70% of the Earth's surface. Clearly, the satellite is an absolutely irreplaceable tool for surveying the ocean globally in a repetitive way and over long periods of time. Three. Main engine start. Two. One. And lift off of the Delta II with Jason II. The latest in the line of sea level satellites is Jason II, a cooperative effort between agencies in Europe and the US. From an orbit 1,300 kilometers above the Earth, it's constantly measuring ocean topography, monitoring the hills and valleys of the sea surface. It gives a global picture, passing over the same spot once every 10 days. Jason 2's radar altimetry technology means it's accurate down to 34 millimeters. So, how does it work? It's actually relatively simple. A radar sends a pulse down to the surface of the sea, and this pulse is reflected back by the sea to the satellite. By measuring the time the pulse takes to get there and back, we have the distance between the satellite and the sea. To obtain a precise distance, we average out millions of individual measurements. The individual measurement is not that precise, but we can find an average from many measurements. Those millions of measurements touch down to the ground hundreds of kilometers from the sea. Jason 2's ground station sits on a mountaintop near Frankfurt in Germany. The satellite rises on the horizon and we have already adjusted its antenna so we can pick up its signal straight away. When the satellite rises above the horizon, the signal intensifies. Our receptors here lock onto it and we pick up its data. We don't have much time to receive the data. We have between 10 and 15 minutes as the satellite passes overhead. And during that time, all the information has to be recorded here in the network. Satellite altimetry is a relatively recent technique with only 15 years of data to analyze. The pioneer was Topex Poseidon launched in 1992. It proved that high-accuracy altimetry from space was an effective tool for studying ocean dynamics, and in 2001 its successor, Jason-1, was launched. The Jason satellites are flying in formation for a while to ensure a smooth handover. Continuity and accuracy are essential to predict the weather and understand why sea levels are rising. The changes in the mean sea level of the oceans is due to two factors. It's due to the thermal expansion of the ocean, 
so when the, if the ocean heats up then it expands but it's also due to the melting of of fresh water so the supply of fresh water from melting ice caps and glaciers and rivers melting fresh water and thermal expansion each account for around 50 percent of the mean ocean level rise but Jason One has shown the sea is rising faster in some places than others. I'll show you this map which represents the variations in the speed of the rise in sea levels measured by the Topex Poseidon and then Jason One since 1993. The colours show the speeds of the rise in millimetres per year. Where it's yellowy-red, it's rising quickly, and where it's blue, it's falling. So what do we see on the map? We can see that over the past 15 years, sea levels in some places have risen more quickly than the average speed. The average is 3 millimetres per year. Here the rise is around 15, 20 millimetres a year. The same here in the southern Pacific. And here in the Aegean Sea. Why would the ocean rise more in one area than another? Today we know that these regional variations are connected to the fact that the ocean does not heat up in a uniform way. We think it's linked to the way ocean currents circulate the heat from one area to another or up and down, but we're working on it and we don't really know why we have these patterns. Jason isn't working alone. The European Space Agency has complementary missions to monitor ocean salinity and the Earth's gravity field. We have been measuring the atmosphere for 150 years in a consolidated way. Uh, the oceans we've only just started 20 years ago to really, in, with, a, with a global system, to measure the state of the ocean. So it's clear that our understanding of the ocean is much less developed than our understanding of the atmosphere. Today we can say that even if global warming were to stop, thermal expansion means that sea levels would continue to rise for decades, perhaps even centuries, because of the heat that's already been stockpiled in the ocean over the past decades. Satellites are an indispensable tool to measure that rise and help us prepare for the effects of our changing climate.